advice. Because <laughs> um, this is going to be, I don't know. Anyway, I, let, we do have some other calls here that we want to wrap up oh, the night that. here with. <laughs> um, I want to go next to Chris in Arizona. Hey, Chris, how's it going tonight? Uh, it's going well. How are you guys doing? Ah. Uh, uh, well, I was doing fine, and then <laughs> this thing happened to me, but I don't have time to get into it now. Let's talk about you, Chris. I, I heard. Yeah. I heard. <laughs> mm. uh, so, uh, I am recently uh, break in, broken free from indoctrination. Congratulations. Um, within the last, thank you, um, 30 years. Uh, I spent 30 years being indoctrinated uh, from the age of four years old. Uh, I was raised by, uh, and, and forgive me if I digress away from with the screen caller, just quick background, I guess, like the previous caller. I was raised being told that I had a high calling on my life. Mm. I was supposed to be a prophet. Um, wow. And I, my mother took me to several pastors and would have them pray over me and confirm this. Uh, and they would pray over me and get these, we're, oh, wow, you, oh, he has such a high calling on his life. And that was around, starting at around age four years old, uh, when I had accepted Christ. And I was always a very articulate child. Uh, didn't really get along with people in my age group very well. Uh, preferred hanging around the adults because uh, they were much more fun to converse with than people my age. And as a result, I didn't relate to children my age very well, and I was bullied severely, uh, physically, uh, verbally. Uh, kids used to follow me home and throw rocks and sticks at me and, you know, come up and just, just punch me in the face or something, just random things. And when I would go to my parents with this, uh, the, the reply, the resounding reply was always, uh, well, this is because you have a high calling on your life. And God is putting you through the testing fires. Mm. Mm. Count it all joy and everything like that. So fast forward 30 years of this essentially being raised. And then when I got older, I was told I was a Jonah when I struggled and started having questions because I would read the Bible and I studied it very intensely. Uh, I have lots of different translations. I went back to the Septuagint. I had Amplified Bible. I had Hebrew transliteration, mm. uh, which is different from translation. They mm. actually transliterate, don't reorder the words and take it directly from all this other research. And when I started having questions and doubts, I was being a Jonah. And so further bullying throughout high school was because I was running away from my calling and God was essentially causing me pain and harm uh, until I would get right back on the path. With Who was, was this your parents telling you this? This is my parents. So this is my, it's primarily my mother. Hmm. I was taken to several pastors, several pastors, several denominations. I was prayed over. Uh, I had hands laid on me and it was always the same. Oh my God, this, he has such a high calling on his life. You are set aside. You, you, wow. You, you have something unique that you have to accomplish in the kingdom. And they even had prophecies over me that at age 33, like Jesus, I would come into my ministry. Oh, uh, what age are you now? You want to ask him? I'm 34. <laughs> oh well, there you go. So there he goes. Their prophecy fell right to the ground. Um, <laughs> hey, there's still time, uh, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Actually, unfortunately, they messed up on that one and they gave it a time limit and age limit. Yeah, you, you don't know, do that. Put it open ended. So, uh, you know, if you interpret days as years, and <laughs> if you do, I don't know. <laughs> hilarious. No, I, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, I'm, I'm sorry to, to keep this really, you know, the background quick. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I was a, part of several denominations and I was actually excommunicated from a five point Calvinistic church publicly by the discipleship group because I questioned predestination. Ooh. They taught that some people are predestined to go to heaven and some people are born literally going to hell. They have no choice on that. And being astute in the scriptures, I referenced to them John three sixteen. Mm. What about this? 
their answer to that, well, this scripture has a problem. So another person in my discipleship group left the, the church because we both questioned together. They called a meeting, told me it was 10 minutes later than it was actually taking place. And this was supposed to be this, uh, you know, pizza party and everything. I got there. There was a circle of chairs, two discipleship group, four different leaders. And they were like, hey, your chair is in the middle. And they sat me down, <laughs> took about 10 minutes telling me that I had caused someone to fall away and that uh, I am no longer welcome uh, because I am questioning their theology. And then they further told me that as punishment, I am to leave early. I'm not going to participate in the pizza party that they had planned. No. I didn't drive at this time. And so they kicked me out of the house and I had to call my you know, my parents to come pick me up again. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's awful. It's just cruel. So That's really awful. Wrestled with these things for 30-some years, and finally, a few months ago, a year ago, I started really just realizing and looking. I have never really seen anybody benefit from any sort of Christian teachings. and in, in fact, the, the complete opposite, I saw my mom be my mother be completely tormented with depression and frustration because my father did not, wasn't the man of God in the house uh, that she expected him to be. And, and as a result of that, uh, they had s severe conflicts and battled and warred. And now I'm breaking free and I'm trying to learn how to deal with how do I go about talking with people because I'm actually very, I'm not angry. Um, I went through that process. I was slightly angry. I, I looked back at my life and I was like, this, this religion has literally inhibited me, uh, destroyed a large part of my life. Uh, mm-hmm. I rejected knowledge and science and a lot of things that I loved. And as a result, now breaking free, I've been diving in to astrophysics and mm -hmm. orbital mechanics and all the stuff that I really love. Mm -hmm. But I'm struggling with how do I go about talking to, To like my family and, and I'm struggling with how do I feel towards my, my, my family yeah. and I'm in kind of in a debate right now with uh, somebody from my old church that is a hardcore anti-vaccination. Mm. Uh, that's yeah that's a whole other can of worms but uh, I want to you know kind of interject so we can kind of start giving yes, you some advice yeah, sorry because this is so it's a topic that comes up on this show quite frequently. How yeah. do we talk to people? And I can give you a couple different answers on that. I've seen some research and, I've, and I have my own practice of how I talk to people. But the first thing I would say for your particular uh, case here, Chris, is I think you need to look at what are your goals in having conversations with people and really, really think hard about that. Because if your goal is I want to convince other people that they're wrong and I'm right – you're going to have problems with that because there, there's right. immediately going to be pushback. But if your goal is I want right. to develop a working relationship with my family so that I can have exactly. – they can have respect for where I'm at right now and even what I think yeah. about some of their practices, then, then I can help you because if you're going straight out of the gate, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tackle this and bring it down. Greater men than you and I have done that before and have failed. Because this shit is hard. This is, th like, the stuff that we're talking about here, these are beliefs that are developed over years and years and years and years and years of time, and they're not going to go down in a day. And if you approach it like that, like, I'm just going to have one conversation with them and just completely blow their mind, I'm sorry. It just typically doesn't work like that. Um, so if, I, you're, if your goal, Chris, is to have a working relationship with your family, then I would say maybe this is a topic that you don't want to talk with them for a bit, <laughs> right? Because, like, you, right. Need, you need some time to figure that stuff out for yourself and get over what they've done to you because right. it sounds like they've abused you, to be honest. It sounds like that's abuse to me. And, yes. I, I, and would, I would have trouble forgiving my family with that. Go ahead. And, and that's exactly where I'm at. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to come railing at them and against them, um, but at the same time, 
Um, I've, I've literally dove in the last several months uh, watching Atheist Experience, and not just that. Um, I have a book that I've been reading, uh, Christopher Hitchens, marvelous, uh, may he rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was a brilliant, brilliant man. God is not great. How yeah. religion mm -hmm. poisons everything. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant book. Uh, I've been watching atheist experience, talk heathen, talk truth, <laughs> RN Ra, uh, another brilliant orator. Uh, and mm -hmm. he just puts his thoughts together so concisely. Yeah. Um, and and that's essentially where I'm at. Um, I don't want to battle with my my parents, mm -hmm. and because I've realized now that, it, and I've always struggled with the concept of eternity, mm -hmm. and and how there's any sort of justice in that. How people can live their whole lives doing terrible things, and on their deathbed be like, oh, I now believe, and yeah all of a sudden they get to go to hell and somehow that's justice. That's, that's the exact opposite. They're getting exactly what they don't deserve. And on, on the conversely, people that spend their whole lives doing good things to people are somehow punished eternally for simply not believing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You, you know what this sounds like? Ludicrous. What's that? This sounds like the atheist evangel evangelism phase. Yeah, you're in the information gathering phase yeah. right now. You are doing yeah. recon. You are figuring out what yeah. it is exactly you believe, which arguments make the most sense to you, which parts of your old life don't make the most sense to you. For some people, that is the concept of justice and mercy. For some people, it's the concept of hell or uh, the logical uh, in the logical problems with the concept of uh, the kind of God we were taught to believe. We all have the thing that makes it the most ridiculous for us. Yeah. Um, so you're you're in that process right now, and I think I think you're right. Yeah. It's very easy, especially if you grew up as an evangelical Christian or any kind of fundamentalist Christian, to get into that mindset of I have information. It's important. I need to share it. I need to share it right now yeah. with people who don't agree with me. Um, and I went through that phase. Did you go through I that phase? I definitely went yeah. through that phase. Yeah. It's, it's right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not exactly, that's not exactly what I'm wanting to do. Cause I know I'm not there yet. And that's why I'm calling to get some okay. more. Cause I'm definitely not there yet. I, there's, I'm not ready to go out, just start evangelizing. <laughs> well, so so <laughs> what we mean by this, Chris, do, though, is, you know, we don't necessarily mean you go out on the streets and, or make YouTube channels and, and talk. Uh, yeah, on those the talk guys show. are weird. Right. What, we, what we really mean is like there is an <laughs> you are figuring a bunch of shit out right now and it is exciting and you want to share what you're figuring out with other people. And like I definitely went through that phase. I was like, wow, this stuff is amazing. I spent way too many nights researching a lot of this stuff. Um, and and just um, figuring this stuff out, and then you start start to talk to other people, and you realize, wow, I'm at a way advanced place than this other person because I just know so much about this particular topic, and and that's where you're gonna find some frustration, and that's where you're gonna be like, why aren't people seeing things my way? This seems so logical and reasonable, and and this is just well, like they're more so it it's more so for the angle that they're mm -hmm. coming to me asking mm -hmm. me now mm -hmm. why. Am I leave? So I'm not. Ah, I'm not okay. wanting to okay. approach them at all, really. Okay, so They're that is different. To me. Yeah. So and my mother, the, mm -hmm. she asked me, "Well, why aren't you Christian anymore?" And I said, "Well, mom, I said I've done. You know, I've looked at things, and this is the conclusion that I've come to. And I just can't you respect that? I'm not Christian anymore, and I won't ever be Christian again. Yeah. And the first thing that she said to me is, "That's sad." Yeah. And it's yep. just. I'm not want, going out wanting to, you know, talk and getting into these conversations, but they're coming to me and being like, mm -hmm. why do you believe this now? And I came from this extremely toxic theology, which mm -hmm. is they believe that the devil, every, every sickness that you have is because you have some unforgiveness in your life or you've mm -hmm. opened the door to the devil yeah. in some way and the devil's afflicting you and uh, yeah. all the spiritual warfare. I, I've mm -hmm. just seen tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. My mother just lost her best friend to cancer because instead of getting cancer treatments, she was going around to prayer houses for a while. Yeah, and, but you know, Chris, there's a 50% chance that when your mom said, how sad is that, she didn't mean it. And because she, you know, she's right. taught to respond to things in a certain way. Like she's taught that mm. that's how you, that's how you need to respond to somebody when somebody is is coming out as atheist with disappointment, with derision. Right. 
because suddenly you're a part of you're not in the in group anymore. You're part of the out group. And that's how they were taught to view other atheists. And now suddenly you're in that category. In order for them to logically be consistent with their worldview, they have to treat you just like they talk about all the other non-believers. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't take too much personal offense to that if that's what's bothering you. But you did mention right. that. No, and I haven't. Yeah, but Chris, you know, I just want to answer your, your question of, you know, what are you doing in self-defense to kind of help with this stuff? Why aren't these people respecting me? And, and they may or may not ever come to respect where you're at right now, and that's the sad truth of it. I mean, you've heard stories right. about Matt and I've his come family. To terms with that. Yeah, and and you know, the sooner that you're able to come to terms with that, the better. I'm glad that you feel like you have. But you know, if they continue to talk to you about this stuff, and invite them, you know, it, you should bring up the point that it's only fair that you get to ask them questions as much as they get to ask you questions. You know, like I, so you, you need to be like right. set the terms, like hey. If this is a conversation you want to have, we need to make this a conversation and not an interrogation because, you know, it's uncomfortable for everybody involved if it's just you mm -hmm. pestering one person about, oh, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And, and you know, maybe that's right. a chance for them to be open and consider their own worldview as well if, if you can frame it like that. But but also I think right. the, the thing that I, I resonate with in your story is feeling kind of a sense of obligation to share what you what you're yeah. figuring out. If they're asking, right. maybe they want to know and maybe it's on you to give them that knowledge that you have come to understand is so valuable and necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not something right. you can put on yourself though. Yeah. Um, if you're not right. able to yet, if you're still hesitant, if you're still learning, if you don't feel like that's a conversation that you would be comfortable having, even if they're asking right now, you are free to say, I don't want to talk about that yet. Yep. Uh, let me do more research and I'll get back to you. Yep. Uh, you don't have to right. let them put you on the spot. Um, if you want to engage, that's great. And I definitely suggest taking Dan's advice and um, making sure that it right. is an open dialogue and you're both asking and answering questions. Mm -hmm. But don't feel like they can push you into that corner if that's not somewhere you want to be yet, even yep. if you do have information you think is important. And get used to saying, I don't know. Because I don't know. I was a, just about that's a, to say. So that's a scary thing for them. They're not allowed to say, I don't know. Yep. You know? Right. And you're probably not used to that either. So you feel like you have to give answers to things. But it's okay, my friend. It is all right. I actually <laughs> have become quite comfortable with that Great. now. With the I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, because it, we just there is a lot of things that we can't know. Yeah. And like why that baby tooth split in half in the middle of the night? <laughs> right. Will we ever know? I like, I, anyway, continue, I please. I like how they changed it. Uh, I like how you guys changed it really quick. Called tooth wanted for a second. Did uh, they? Did they? They are. <gasps> they did. They did. <laughs> I didn't even notice. <laughs> we have like this tiny screen off oh. in the distance where we can kind of oh see our stuff. It's, it's beautiful. The... It, it was, is beautiful. God it briefly, damn it. But it was great. <sighs> but, I love our production. Yes, group. I. They're fantastic. Anyway. <laughs> they're, they're great. The, all of these shows are, are really great. Um, production's great. So hats off to them, too. They probably don't get enough credit. Production never gets enough credit. They definitely don't. <laughs> they definitely don't. Well, Chris, we we but, we do have to kind of wrap things up here, um, just so we yes. can get to this last call here. Um, but if you did want to talk yeah, about so, this more, you know, we will be hanging out on Discord for just a little bit. Um, and of course, you can always contact me through the Truth at Atheist hyphen community dot org email. And I'm sure there's some people in the chat and the Discord that would love to talk to you about it more to kind of give you some more tips, this stuff. Uh, but again, we do have Great. to kind of. And, uh, how do I get to the Discord? Yeah, so um, if you if you're watching this live stream right now, there is a link to it in the description. So go ahead and check it out there. And there's probably links to it if okay. you're listening to this at home and this is recording as well. Yeah, that should be in the description. Yes, should be in the description for that. Um, but anyway, Chris, Perfect. I just want to thank you again. Well, thank you. For, yeah. Thank you guys. And I, I definitely, that's exactly the advice I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. um, you guys were, it's exactly what I needed to hear. And I'm getting comfortable with that place. And I know now that it's okay to say, I don't know. And that's one of the largest things that bothered me when I was in the, the indoctrination and the faith is that I always felt like I, I couldn't say that yep. I don't know. I had to say, well, I have the one truth. So yep. thank you so much. Uh, I hope to be able to call in again and to continue this discussion because there's actually so much more I'm that sure. I can dive into that my yeah. childhood. <laughs> Zero doubts thank about that. Thank you so much. Uh, no you guys problem, have a Chris. wonderful night. Thank you, Chris, and, and thank you for sharing again your story. Um, that's heavy stuff. 
It is, and it's all too common. Well, I don't know about calling your kid a prophet. Yeah, you know, that's, 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 that's heavy for a kid. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of pressure. And then denying them pizza. Chris, if you come to the ACA, <laughs> we will give you pizza. Oh, yes. Let's throw a pizza party just for yes. Chris. Yeah, that's awesome. I like that idea. Chris, if you're still listening, come on down, man. We'll, we'll make that happen.